Red personnel guardians. Love line may contain sexually oriented content. Content. Listener discretion is advised. Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. Love line. Love line. Coast to coast. Hey, everybody, it's Loveline. I'm Adam Carolla. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1 800 L O V E 191. Dr. Drew, board certified physician, addiction medicine specialist. Drew? I'm here. Okay. How's yeah, Vegas? Surprise. How's Vegas? Uh, it's hotter. No. Hotter, and, hotter than the hubs of hell in yeah. this town. But you spent all your time outside, right? Well, I didn't get in until about uh, 7, 7 30 this evening, and uh, we took a big bus. I'm out here for a bachelor party. My, just, my thing is, you took like a school bus. Does that mean air conditioned, un, non air conditioned yellow school bus? No, it was not the Partridge family bus. Uh, it was okay. a, it's kind of bus that you'd charter. You know, it had about uh, 50 seats in it. Right, yeah. Right. And we bought a bunch of booze and uh, various things on the bus, Was and we uh, headed on out. Strippers on the bus? No. 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 Strippers. A few guys, <laughs> few guys got naked, but uh, no ladies to be found on the bus. A uh, little farting action? You know what? <laughs> Nobody really stepped up. And, uh, <laughs> I'm so I'm sorry. Oh, Adam, I'm really sorry. Well, and you, you know, know how looking, it is. You're looking forward to that, too. Forty guys going to Vegas. I mean, forty guys, uh, six and a half hours in this bus, huh. and these are guys that are world class gas men. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. This is this is the equivalent to having like Barry Bonds and Mark McGuire and Ken Griffey, and no one hits a home run the whole day. Oh, Do you no, know no, what one I'm even, no one even connects. No, no one, no one even tripled off the wall. Oh. There was like there was a couple of uh, solid singles, couple Texas leaguers, and a uh, few few uh, few close pa places at uh, close plays at second, but nothing nothing really to speak of. No one really stepped up. You sound remarkably cogent, cohesive, coherent. Well, that? you know, I got I got my buzz on on the way out of town, but uh, around Baker. When I stepped off the bus at the Arby's, and it was 117 oh. degrees. Oh, and you love that heat. I, I sobered up. It is, it is I mean, I, I think a lot of the people are listening around the country. They know what it's like to be 93 and muggy. They yeah. may even know 101 and uh, desert climate. But when you get around 117, 118, that's a, that's a whole new world. Let's put it this way. The difference between 90 and 117 is just about the same as the difference between 90 and 60. That's right. Okay. <laughs> that's right. Except for you can really, on, on, the misery, on the misery scale, you can on the misery index, you can add like three degrees for each degree past yeah. 110. Right. It's not a direct. It's a, there's a, right. Right. I mean, as you start getting temperature-wise over 107, 108, it becomes unnatural. Well, it's like as a human being freezing to be temperatures in it. too. It gets ridiculous. It gets painful at a certain point. Yes, this yeah. is this is painful. And you know, the thing that's funny is, is instinctually when you step into it, you think you need to get away from something. Yeah. It feels as if you're standing next to the engine on a bus that's been parked for an hour or something. Uh, you, you start moving around. Uh -huh. You start stepping. You try to sidestep the heat. <laughs> it's weird. You think, oh, what's up here? And you, you try to move over, but it follows you everywhere. And it is just, I could not imagine living out here. It is now, it is now uh, 10 o'clock in the evening, and it's uh, 97 uh. degrees outside. And that's the, that's the other thing. It's one thing when it's brutal and the sun is shining, but it is it is downright distracting when you step out at night and it's a hundred degrees. Well, you can it's see bizarre. What, you can see why people could live there because at least in the winter time it's like forty degrees at night time. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy. It is it's extreme uh, it, climate. It is a brutal place, and it it screws with your head a little yeah. bit, like. When you step out of a strip club at three thirty, four in the morning, did you, uh, did you leave your buddies? By the way, in the strip club, I, le I left them. No, not at the strip club. I left them at the uh, buffet at Caesars, and I'll, I'll no, see them later. No strip club yet. Well, I, I had to leave them at nine fifteen at night. But, but I thought their first stop would have been Olympic Gardens. No, they got a carb load first. Oh, I see. I, oh, okay, got it. Fluids, right? Right. Yeah. They uh, go to the Caesars Buffet. They uh, pay their $14. They eat $127 worth of shellfish. Oh, yeah. 
and then they uh, head on over to the Olympic Garden. Oh, God. But the, the point is, is when you step out of that place at 3.34 in the morning and it's 93 degrees, uh, it's weird. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's, it's like, like it's, you're, like, you're, it's you're, like the endless, uh, the, the, like yeah. being in Alaska when the sun never sets. It's, it's, it's the same it's, kind of you're, feeling. You're in some sort of bad movie where the greenhouse effect has ruined the ozone <laughs> and we're all sweating behind the neck. <laughs> Yeah, it's really, it's it's surreal. I, I would kill myself if I lived in Vegas. And, and I've said this before, Drew, and I really think I could do this, especially with your help and the help of the listeners. A class action lawsuit against the state of Nevada. Now you have another reason. Just We all heat. join in. Yeah. The heat, the misery, the money lost gambling, the venereal diseases, the bad marriages at the drive through chapels, the uh, heart disease from the buffet... All of America gets in on this. I mean, if you can sue, if smokers can sue the tobacco manufacturers yeah. because why, why they smoke we, for less, yeah. why can't I sue Las Vegas because I gambled and ate too much shrimp scampi? Why can't we hold the state of Nevada accountable for the yeah, things let, they allow to go down? Or I they encourage to go down? I have lost thousands and thousands of dollars gambling. <laughs> I've lost thousands of dollars at the strip club, not oh. to mention a little pride. And your, some your, fluid. your health, your soul, my God. My soul, yes, my reputation oh. has been damaged. Oh, and that's, and that's been so carefully maintained. God knows there's been venereal diseases spread uh, from lap to lap in this town. I mean, uh, this is just off the top of my head. Yeah. What about all the gaudy bad jewelry that's been bought at the Caesars gift shop? The overpriced uh, bad zip-up boots on the side? The You're whole, required. everything. Yes. Uh, Wayne, Wayne Newton alone we should be able to get a few hundred million from. <laughs> I'm just saying, America, think about this. You're all in for a taste. Anyone who's ever been to Vegas. Any attorneys listening, please call in. <laughs> Brian, I want to hear some attorneys. It was class action against the state of Las Vegas, the state of Nevada. I, I, I want to I wanna sue the state of Nevada. I also, my other big move, Drew, is, is as you pass through the town of Baker, which is about halfway from L.A. to Nevada, that's a home of the famous Bun Boy, which is the world's most uh, mediocre hamburger, and except they have signs every 10 isn't feet. is the fruit, the date fruit place there, too? No, that's Hadley's. Hadley's. That's on the way to Palm Springs. Okay. Point is, is they have something that they advertise as the world's largest thermometer. It's this thing that looks like, uh, like it's the, uh, like they have at the Indianapolis 500. It's this long monolith that's about 50 feet high, and it has the temperature on it. But I argue, Drew, that it's not the world's largest thermometer. It merely displays the temperature. And for that reason, it should be torn down, or they should have to change the name. This is going to be another part of my, another plank in my platform, Drew. Add it to the suit. That's right. I'm going to add it to the suit. <laughs> the world, yes, the world's largest thermometer in your neighboring city of Baker is, in fact, Your Honor, not a, a thermometer at all. No, is it? The sign. No. The sign. It's a sign. It's a sign with numbers on it. Yes, thank you. Thank you. I, I, I rest my case. Now, D is yeah. 29. D? Hello. Hi, D. What's Hi. happening, D? Oh, not much. Just uh, had a question for you guys. Love yeah. you guys, by the way. Thank you. Great. Um, what, what's up there? Uh, the question is, like, do guys usually sense when a girl is usually, I guess you would say, not, not easy, but a little bit more promiscuous than most? Can they sense it? Yeah, they yeah. feel they feel her uh, lips yeah. on their penis. And no, no, no. They, no yeah, no. I'm they saying they get the idea. They, they, I mean, there probably are. Th oh, she of, means downstairs. No, no, you don't. You don't mean can they actually? I think she does. Feel it, feel it. Do you? Yeah. No, no, no. Do guys usually like? Do they sense it? Yeah. Do they sense like if a girl is dateable or just <laughs> the kind of girl that you're just going to have sex with? Uh, yes, but that may not have anything to do with you. In other well, words, I mean, they, they, first off, one guy may want to date you, and the next guy may right. want to hump you. Right, and that has nothing to do with her. That's the guy. But when a guy sees a chick who's uh, wearing the uh, denim mini skirt and the cowboy boots and has the unicorns painted on the fingernails, he's thinking more short term right. than he is long term. And interestingly, when people have studied this, uh, what a lot of people like to call the double standard, guys don't really care about whether you've been with, they make note of it, they might, might sort of determine how they think of you, but they kind of let it go very quickly. Women perpetuate the double standard. M women will go up to their male friends and, and tell them not to date a certain girl because of her past.
Right. Okay. And is D, D, what do you, now how do you dress, how do you wear your hair? Okay, well, my hair's kind of long and curly, um, naturally. Um, uh -huh. I just got a little bit conservative. I don't dress mm -hmm. outrageously, like, provocatively, you know. All right. I, I yeah. do have a, a big chest. Does kind of stand yeah. out. Nice, <laughs> nice. But, nice. Um, yeah. Right. We, if we, we see things like, uh, you know, uh, tongue, barbells... Yeah, and, uh, I do have one of those. Uh, oh, oh, that's, uh, uh, open for business. Yeah, that's a that's a that's a billboard. How right about now. a navel? How about navel piercing? Uh, yeah, I had one of those. Uh, took yeah. it out though. Navel. All right. Yeah. We uh, yeah, yeah, we see uh, we see uh, the pumps, whatever. We I think I think men. Are like uh, they're like the bionic man. Their eye focuses in. You hear some computing sound. No, it really it's, it's like you know it's like the the the, uh, the Terminator's eye view. Right. With all this right. information being projected onto the visual screens. That's that's what it is. So it's like we see the conservative dress, but then we zoom in on the barbell through the tongue, and we think, oh yes, Slutville. Well, I haven't had that for too long. I'm you know, I'm 29. I've probably had right, it a few well, years, but. Well, listen. What are you worried I mean, I, about? What's your problem? Well, the thing is, is I, like, I think a, a friend of mine kind of made a statement the other day that kind of made me mad that, you know, a girl is only good for sex if that's all she's ever had. You know what I mean? No, and that's not. not that. dateable. Was that a girl that said that or a guy that said that? A guy. Well, I don't even know what that means. I don't she's either. Only, yeah. She's only good for sex if she's only had sex? You mean if you've never well, had... If, well, because I'm 29 and I've really never really had a relationship. Yeah. And, okay. You know, Why not? I find that guys just... I don't know. I just find that guys just pretty much want to get me in the sack. <laughs> no, th those are the guys you're you're attracted to. Yeah, you're to. going after those guys, right? Go find some nice geeky guy that you're not that into. <laughs> Believe me, he'll treat you like a queen. And he'll be boring, and you'll want to sabotage it. And that's the one you got to hang in with. Oh, yeah. really? Yeah. Do you have any? Do you have any kids? No, I don't have any kids. I uh, know kids. Never twenty nine. Never had a steady boyfriend. Um, when I was nineteen, I dated somebody for about eight months, and that's about no. it. No. <laughs> You got Ten a years. Dr drug and alcohol stuff going on? Uh, no drugs. Um, my mom passed when I was young. She passed when I was 20, so I, I kind of... No, that's not it. Do you, do you, All right, listen, we, D, we give you permission to date, for Christ's yeah, sake. Yeah, Ten work, years. Work on well, no, she was, she's been sleeping with guys. Well, I, I know, but I mean... I don't mean date. I mean have a relationship. Or have dates yeah. that turn into a relationship. Yeah. Jesus, ten years. But she's then. picking these jack-offs, you know, so... Yeah. Time to time to learn the lesson that most women learn when they're 19. That, that's right. what, that banging your head against the wall doesn't work. Try something a little different. Bryce, 16. Hey, what's up? Hey. hey what's happening? Record, I uh, used to live in Las Vegas. No. Oh. Bad times. <laughs> oh, brutal heat. Yeah. Well, anyway, imagine um, being well, a kid in this town. Yeah. Uh, you yeah. ride your bike down the... Uh, you, you, you go down the driveway, you have a heat stroke, your tires melt, and you collapse. That's yeah. where they find you. I had a little plastic big wheel, and that thing melted. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> it, it is It is funny, Drew, that uh, after, like, 115, 118, 120, tr train tracks start buckling, big wheels start melting. Wow. I mean, stuff <laughs> ceases to function. Cars don't work. You know, stuff oh, stops wow. working. Incredible. Jesus Christ, how high do you people have to be? Every time I talk to someone, and I don't know why this is such a pet peeve of mine, but I swear I want to punch my partner Jimmy Kimmel in the belly every time I talk to him. He's like, he lived in like Tucson and Phoenix and Flagstaff. He lived in Vegas and he lived in Palm Springs. And oh I'm like, are you, oh are you high? Are you high? Are you high? Why don't you just move to the sun, you retard? <laughs> move right to the sun. Why don't you wrap yourself in foil and just get a space? heater, just one of those propane heaters, like those 7,000 BTU jobs, and just strap it to your head but and just, walk just around. Just think about Jimmy for a second. He never even walked outdoors. He just sits no, in an air-conditioned room. But the Jimmy was always like, no, I mean, Palm Springs, yeah, sure, it got up to 121, but it was dry. Oh. I was like, are you kidding me? I can't believe... All right, anyway, I'm sorry. All right, I, it is I can't... I don't, I don't even like hearing about people living in hot places. Yeah, yeah I'm with you. Well, you had to work out of doors in, 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 oh. a, in a labor, oh. you know, in a, in an unskilled labor oh. position. Oh. All right. Oh. Go ahead, Bryce. Yeah, I've been listening for a long time. Love you guys. All right. Loving you, buddy. Thank you. Anyway, um, yeah, I was wondering if beating off three times a day is a bit excessive. If it's 118 degrees, you, you will die. It's 16. No, that's no. not over I'm, the top. I'm 14. I'm almost 15. You're 15? Oh, almost 15? 
I'm what? Uh, no, yeah, you, that you, sounds right. You sound no, but he sounds like he's 26, 14. All right, the guys named Bryce uh, mature fast. Okay, right? all right, I understand. Get it a lot. Uh, well, Bryce, listen, uh, not over the top. Uh, is it something you can't contain and you want to contain? Well, no, it's just something I do. And it says up here on the screen that you do it out of boredom. Yeah. That actually disturbs me a little bit because boredom is, for some people, is kind of an interesting feeling. It's something that people get when they want to avoid affect, avoid feelings. There's sort of a depression bubbling around underneath. And when you sit by yourself, you start feeling empty and bored, and you got to do something to sort of manage that, take a drug, beat off, whatever, mm -hmm. and, you know, go you know, bang your head with a frying pan. It's sort of the idea. You're just doing these arousing things to try to get away from your feeling states, and that's a bothersome thing. Mm -hmm. But it's not the beating off so much as the fact that you can't just sit alone and have your feelings. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, well, yeah, right. I, I was wondering, because, like, after the third time, I noticed my ass flared up, and it was the size of oh, a minute. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. Wait, wait, I want to see how old he actually is. Hey, Bryce. Bryce. Oh, come on. And he hung up, Drew. Oh. Yeah. Focus call. There you go. Well, I want to see how old he actually was. He was, like, 22. Well, here's the thing. He said 16, or you said 16. It says 16, 16 on the board, then he says 14, so. Shanna. Shana? Shana. Shana. Okay. Strike, yeah. Strike one. 21. Yeah, I'm 21. What's going on? You want to talk? Yeah. All right, go. Okay. I have a couple of problems. My boyfriend of like a year and a half, he's Christian, comes from a really religious family, and I'm Jewish, and I come from a pretty observant family, and it's just every time we break up, it's because of that same reason. I have to lie to my parents and tell them that I, I'm i not with him. And it's just I love him so much. And I feel like, like, obviously, I'm with him for some apparent reason. And, like, you know, I, I'm totally into being Jewish. I, I, I believe in God. But all these rules about Judaism are really turning me off. And it, it's just really hard for me because I feel like I want to be married to him. Does he want how, to old is, how old is he? He's going to be 23 in a couple of weeks. Can't you each practice your respective religions without becoming unified in a family? To some extent, yeah. I mean, he's more, he's more religious than I am. I pretty much just believe in God. What's his uh, background? Uh, evangelical, Protestant, kind of. Yeah. Evangelical. Yeah. He's the one that raises his mom. I went to church with him. His mom is the one that raises his hands. During uh, the service, it's it's interesting. Raises the wire, yeah. her hands. Her hands when they sing, you know, like uh, oh. cheerfulness, you know. Really, the, really, yeah, and she's she, she's she does this, and she's white. Yeah, she does. Oh this. my God, she uh, needs psychiatric go evaluation. Evangelical. Go to an evangelical church, and you'll see a lot of people raising their yeah. hands to the sky. I'll take your word for it. Yeah. Well, listen. Listen, of course this is nonsense, and Judaism is nonsense as well. So you both have a, your own sort of nonsense to try to win the other one over with. But I, I'm more with you, Shana, which is uh, you're not as, as bought into your nonsense as this but guy it, is. It's the fact that, like, okay, I do love my family a lot. Like, I have two older brothers, and I don't know what I would do without them. And plus my, my grandmother and then my parents. I mean, I love them a lot, but... Yet they're, you know, they're putting these instinctive roles on me and saying that. Well, let me, hold on a second. Quiet down, quiet down there. Okay. Now, let me say this. Maybe, and uh, Drew, I don't know if this is what you're thinking, hmm. but yes, it's true. Okay, here's the deal with uh, the Jews. The Jews have been prosecuted or persecuted their entire existence. Yeah. But on the other hand, they, they hate other religions about as much as other religions hate them which is ironic, but I guess it makes sense. They just get the short end of the stick all the time. The Jews can't stand it when their kids marry outside of the religion. And they're the ones that are always preaching tolerance, but they're the first pe people to stand up and make a, make a, raise a fuss if somebody marries outside. So to me, it's, uh, 
it, I don't know, it's sort of a conveniently retarded uh, way to approach life. But I, I have problems with most right. religions. The Jews are the best out of the religions. Don't get me wrong. They take care of their family. They're a little bit smarter than the other religions. Other I, religions are kind of stupid. The Jews I don't know, have... Really smart like yes. Like now, let, let me tell you something. Collectively, the Jews have a higher IQ than any other religion. When you add them all up? In spite of the small yeah, who, numbers. Who's higher, who's higher intellectually? Jews or like Muslims or born-again Christians? Born-again Christians are like practically, they're like, uh, they're retarded. Well, they're born, what, what do you got to be to be retarded, Drew? Like in the 60s, your IQ, the 70s? <laughs> Average born-again's got to be in the mid-60s. Mid to family, lower 60s IQ. His family yeah. wants him to marry someone Christian, too. and He wants to marry someone Christian. But right. he yeah. to me, like, I love you so much, blah, blah, blah. And have I'm you guys like, had other love relationships? I, no, I'm his first to everything. Hang on, hang on, Shana. Have you, either of you been in love with someone else ever? No. Neither of you? Neither. Yeah, I mean, this is what you need. How, yeah, how long have you been together? Like, we, like, almost two years. Like, uh, over right. a year and a half. So this is your first love. It started when you were 19. It, no, it started when I was 20. I beg your pardon. It, you were, it's your first. Totally different. It's your totally different. It's your first love. It started yeah. in you know young adulthood, basically. Uh, it's time to look at this realistically and either either s or cut bait. And if it's time to go because they're irreconcilable differences, there will be other love relationships for you that will be and, yes. equally as gratifying as this. Guaranteed. Be attorneys, dentists, <laughs> uh, doctors. No, and, and here's the thing too. You know, here's the sense I get. Since the Jews are a little bit saner than the than the Christians, mm -hmm. I think the Jew family of uh, of uh, Shana's, I think they sense this guy's a little bit wacky, uh, and I think they sense that Mama and her parents are a little Ooh, bit wacky. Interesting. That's because they would they would have been sort of acquiescing if it had been a great guy. If At least guy he's a great was, guy. Let's say the guy's Catholic or a Christian or whatever the hell he is, but he's a solid guy and he's a good guy. Or, or how about an exceptional guy? An stuff. exceptional guy, maybe. Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Because she's not, the, she maybe she's exceptional. She's not really telling well, us that. The Jews, here's what the Jews would do: they would work on converting the guy. Yeah, they they teach they, would, they, they teach him that. they teach him how to get around in the right. community, and they they right. figure it out. Yeah. Right, right, right. But I think they see crazy mama with her hands over yeah. her head yeah. at the uh, at the revival, and they yeah. go, oh, like. Forget this. Yeah. My daughter ain't marrying this. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I'll tell you, no family, I, I don't know, maybe maybe there's a handful of Asian groups that beat out the Jews in terms of who their kids marry, mm. but the Jews got to be right at the top of the heap. My parents, I could have married a uh, lesbian hippo. <laughs> they would have no problem with it. Okay. I, I really could have married whoever I wanted. I, I, you know, I could be dating uh, Liberace's ex-boyfriend <laughs> and put put a promise ring on his on his dork, and my parents would be completely fine with it. But <laughs> Jews, they go bananas. They go bananas if the guy's not making some money, the guy's not Jewish. It's all it's, it's such nonsense. Oh, they got oh please, oh don't get me started. Drew, did your parents your parents cared who you married, right? Well, of course, of course. Yeah, they're crazy. They're crazy that way. Yeah. All right. Well, maybe it's good. Maybe they just care. Here we All go. Right. I think these two need to break up. I agree. We got to take a break here, yes, Drew. Yes, we do. Speaking of breaking up. All right. Phone number one eight hundred L O V E one nine one. I'm in uh, Las Vegas, where it's one hundred degrees. Drew is in uh, sunny but uh, mild Southern mm -hmm. California. Mild at one hundred and two. Yes. We'll take ourselves a little uh, break, and we'll be right back after this. Hey, everybody, it's Loveline. I'm Adam Carolla. That is Dr. Drew over there in Southern California. <laughs> yeah. oh, drop trial. Oh. <laughs> yeah, phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Drew. Yeah. I'm in uh, Las Vegas, as people may know, this evening. You're I suffering. Took a, uh, took a party bus out here with about uh, 35, 40 guys uh, drinking, smoking a little reefer. You know how it goes. Good through. times. Yeah. Now let me tell you something, Drew. I know you're 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 interested in the differences between men and women. And yes. Let me explain something that goes on on this bus that I've had happen before on buses with uh, the same crew, mm -hmm. albeit on shorter trips. But uh, it's a little game called touch the back of the bus. And the way this works is is if you can picture a bus like a Greyhound bus or a school bus, they got seats on either side and an aisle going down the middle. 
Well, the game is to see if you can sort of run the gauntlet down the middle and make it to the back of the bus. Will guys beat the crap out of you? On the oh, way yes. by? Oh, yeah. yeah. No, 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 no. There's no beating the crap out of on the way by. It is you cannot get to the back of the bus. Okay, got it. Now, you can get started for the first half of the bus because those are people that aren't paying attention and aren't really interested. H hang on a second. I'm just imagining a bachelorette party. Y y yes. Oh, this happens all the time. As you get toward the last six, five, six, seven rows before you get to the back of the bus, it stiffens up quite a bit. Oh, yeah. And there's a lot of guys that are ex-jocks. There's some big guys. There's some strong guys. and There's some drunk guys. And it is to the point where uh, there's some black eyes. Yeah, I'm sure of it. Yeah. Uh, there's, I mean, one guy, uh, Gavin, our uh, assistant from last year, is of 6'2", goes about 240, has a shiner. I bet. A bona fide shiner I from bet. an elbow he caught. Oh, yeah. C Cousin Sal uh, took uh, Doug DeLuca, who uh, b was on a football scholarship to uh, Villanova oh. eight years ago, goes about 270, uh, this guy got hung up, and Cousin Sal dumped a, a whole bunch of Arby's sauce down his crack. Nice. Their uh, shirts torn, eyes blackened, uh, underpants ripped well, off. Now, Adam, now, what, now let's face yes. it. You don't actually enjoy it. There's, there's no drive to do this kind of thing. This is society <laughs> telling you what's what men ought to do that makes you do these That's things. That's right. That's because we played with army men. That's right. It, may, it, it, it got... It, 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 you were sort of indoctrinated in this kind of behavior. Now, That's if they right. told you not to do this, you would never be doing this sort of thing, ever. There, there are 35 guys on this bus, average age, uh, 29, eh, 29, 30, beating the crap out of each other. And I'm not talking about a fun game. I'm talking about twisting, yeah. grabbing, yeah. yanking, tearing yeah. no, shirts, guys crawling over each other. And... and, and Guys have destroyed sh buttons ripped off the shirt. Everyone's Listen, got bruises all over their bodies. And here's the reality. Uh, even a nerdy idiot like me sounds like fun. Touch the back of the bus. That, I'm, in, I'm in. Count me in. You get the, you get the yeah. crap. You couldn't. No, Drew, you couldn't do it wearing your glasses. No, I, I, get get I, 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 I get it. I get it. I get it. You, you really and shouldn't now, be wearing a shirt. Now everyone is dumping everything down. Every, yeah. One guy... Poor Tom Stern got his underpants. He got such a uh, wedgie that he tore the brim off his underpants and pulled <laughs> it up over his shoulders. And people are being beaten. I mean, look, if half of this happened to you in the lobby of a hotel, you'd have a multi-multi-million dollar lawsuit. <laughs> Any of it. Half. The, no, I mean half... I mean, Any no, I don't of those mean half. I don't, no, I don't mean half of the overall. I mean, if you made one run for the back oh, of this I bus see. and half of what happened to you in that one run I see. happened to you in a hotel, you'd be a rich man. Yes, yes. All right, let's move ahead here, Drew. Here we go. This is uh, Justin, fifteen. Yeah. What's um, up, Justin? Well, uh, I've been I've been thinking about getting my tongue pierced. Yeah. Yeah, uh, and uh, I wanted to know if like the risks and everything involved is, is well, it really worth it. I, I personally don't think so. Uh, you are a healthy person, you're, you're, and you're now violating a body space with a spear, basically. And there are risks. It's amazing that more bad things don't happen. But now they've reported brain abscesses, where the infection can track down through the, the tongue, piercing and get up into the back of the head there and actually track into the brain. They, the tongue can swell and occlude the airway. You can get excessive bleeding and infection. It can be a mess. Oh, really? Yeah. But, it, but, it actually, there, but it actually rarely happens. So it's shock, surprisingly. But yeah. What do you want one for, though? Well, I don't know. I've heard some things that improves oral sex, and uh, I don't no, know. You, no, you, Justin, you're 15. You, you don't even know what to do with a vagina at yeah. 15. Ma master master what you it. can do with what you got. Forget the... I, and by the way, do you hear people calling in all this to all the, sh the show all the time saying, Oh, my God, somebody did that to me with a, with a pierced tongue? Yeah. Best thing ever. You're never going to hear that call. Well, I'll we'll scream that out. Hearing some things about it, and that's what I was calling about to see if it was like really worth it for that. Yeah, well, how, yeah, how hearing your jack off friends talk about it is different than actually people who've had this it's done to them. How much box are you actually munching at uh, age fifteen? Is this a daily thing? No, nah, it's, it's. What, not do, you, what do you log? You log about two hours a day of uh, box mm -hmm. lunching? No, no, okay. not really. Uh, all right, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't be a jack off. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. I right, listen. I'm, I I I don't I don't want to be like old fashioned or square or anything like that. 
I just personally disapprove of anyone trying to do anything, really, right. that has to do with making a statement. I don't like people other dyeing than, their hair. Other than be, being the crap out of your friends. Uh, or Kat, trying yeah. to get to the back of the right. bus unlawfully, Drew. Okay, yes. Kathleen, 15. Yes? Hi, what's up, Kathleen? Hi, I'm like six months pregnant right now. Six and a half. Good times. And I went to the doctors and they said I'm um, three centimeters dilated. Mm-hmm. And are they, I mean, are they I mean, telling you to stay down a little bit, or? Yeah, well, I mean, I have to walk to school and everything, so I, did, I don't know if that's doing anything. Did they tell you not to do that? Well, they say I need to stay off my feet. Right. But um, my question is, is like, if I have my baby this early, what is the chances that he would survive? And if he survived, um, what would the would there be birth defects? Where are you about twenty eight weeks now? Um, I'm about 26, almost 27. Yeah, 20, th that would be a pretty awful thing. It and, would? Yeah, and while oh, babies survive that, babies survive that, they, they have problems. There's Hold on, let me, let me ask a few questions here, Drew, yeah. of you. Yeah. Uh, dilation. Mm. What is there, uh, 10, 10 millimeters in a centimeter or 10 centimeters in a millimeter? Ten, what, what ten, is it? 10 millimeters in a centimeter. All right, so, so three... Being dilated three centimeters is like being dilated like uh, an inch and an eighth or right, something like that. Right, the opening of the cervix is opened about an inch. So uh, that's, it's a, is that a fair amount of dilation? Mm -hmm. It's like, uh, well, you know, it might, might, what, what it might you, be meaningful kind of thing. If what I do you di when do you usually start dilating? Uh, that's something that, that's, you know, it, towards delivery. Right, so the idea that you start dilating early means uh, that could the, be a bad sign. That's right. And so now, what do you die? Yeah, this thing get off the feet, so the pressure there is not uh, directed towards the ground. That area. Yeah. All right. And, and, and when do you dilate? Now, what do you ultimately dilate to? You know, it's, it's been so long since I've done obstetrics. I think it's like about eight or ten centimeters. Okay, so she's at three, and she is about. She said about six and a half months pregnant. Yeah, twenty-nine weeks, twenty-seven weeks. She said. Now, I mean, in this day and age, uh, being born, what, three months premature or whatever? Yeah, they can survive. Not, 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 not great, but... Well, lots of stuff happens to those kids, and they're, they're finding out more and more. There's all kinds of things. But, uh, I mean, is there... You, is want, there... you want to get past 32 weeks. That's really what you want that's, to do. That's the mark. Th that, that's, yeah, that's a good mark. You okay. definitely want to get past 28, and you'd like to get past 32. And uh, I'd like to go to, like, 180. Is that possible? 180 weeks? Yeah, and by the way, uh, Kathleen is 15, I know. so... walking to school. It's probably... <laughs> that's probably how she got pregnant. Oh. Put her back on. Let me see what's up with her. Kathleen? Kathleen? Yeah? Who's the father? His name's Joe. Ah. And he's 16 years old. Um, I was with him for like a year before I had sex with him at all. Why did you... Did you intend to get pregnant? Not at all. I was on birth control, and I used condoms. Oh, my God. Are you sure you're pregnant? <laughs> I'm definitely positive I'm pregnant. It's the immaculate conception. Well, you know, she probably screwed both those things up. You, you can't do birth control right and condom right and get pregnant. She wasn't taking her pill at the right time or whatever. Condom broke? Yeah, the yes. condom broke. All right, so what are you going to do? Are you going to give the kid up for adoption? No, I'm going to keep the baby. My mom was adopted, and she's all messed up in the head. So, I'm oh. not. <laughs> <laughs> That's all the reason you need to keep the baby. You got a, you got a 15-year-old that was uh, raised by messed up mama. Oh, yeah. Well, I didn't exactly yeah. live with her my yeah. whole life, so. Let me, let me ask you this. As far as the authorities go, is there somebody assigned to you? Is there somebody who's interested in this? Do they worker? follow you? Yeah. What do you mean? The, the, the social oh. services involved with your life. Yeah, they yeah. are. Okay. That's what I mean, by the way. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what are they doing? Are they, what, do they talk to you on a weekly basis? No, my um, social worker is supposed to contact me every month, and I haven't talked to her in, like, three months. So, um, but they, they don't want me to have the baby mm. i mean what? they automatically what? assume that i'm not going to be a fit mother yeah I mean, it's, 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 they got a point good assumption good assumption 
Yeah, but you know how they, like, automatically assume in this country that you don't drive a car well at, like, age 10? Yeah. These are good assumptions. Yeah, it's, it's not a bad not a bad call. Uh, it's not that you're a bad person, but at 15, no, it, it, it just almost is impossible. Drew, what would you rather have as a society, 10-year-old drivers or 15-year-old mothers? 10-year-old drivers. <laughs> hands I hands mean, down. I, hands, hands down, down hands, right? Hands down. Yeah, but that's basically what it is. It's nothing against your 10-year-old. It's just, Drew, you got a couple of 10-year-olds, right? Much rather right. have them driving. Yeah, than, I, I just mean, I just mean they're not ready to. No. That's not, they wouldn't be, they would be dangerous. Yeah. They might affect other people in a negative way. Mm -hmm. But right. not with the high degree of likelihood that yes. Kathleen's situation might. All right, Kathleen, please give the kid up for adoption. Thank you. Okay. All right. All right. All right, baby. Good times. Good times. You know, what, it, 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 it's worth saying, though, that people that actually do studies on teen moms, the outcomes are not as bad as you would expect. Some, sometimes the outcomes are, I mean, it's, it's not as bad as you'd expect. Let's put it that way. No, it's not universally no, it's, bad. No, I, I don't mean, I don't think the kid automatically becomes a, uh, an, you know, an attorney <laughs> or something. Something horrible, horrible, or, or involved with the parking enforcement or uh, any kind of traffic enforcement or anything like that. I, I won't say that, or or Hitler, something like that, <laughs> which I, you know, below below the traffic enforcement. But I do say that it it ruins the life of the fifteen year old. That too. I mean, yes, you got to look at it this way. We're we're worried about the kids, obviously. What's a fifteen year old? Which is a kid. She's a kid, too. But that's a kid. That's a kid that doesn't get to go to college or do whatever, pursue right. whatever, fix whatever. That's a kid whose life is uh, subjugated. So, you know, for me, it's sort of two lives. It's not just the uh, infant. Good point. Uh, all right, Drew. Now I'm done caring. Good times. All right, we're going to take ourselves a uh, quick break. Who are we going to talk to when we come back, Drew? We'll talk to Chad, who's tired of you bagging on Christianity. All right. We'll all talk right. to a young religious zealot, Chad, after this. It's Love Line. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. I'm in Las Vegas tonight. Drew's in uh, the Love Line studio in Los Angeles. 1 800 L O V E 191. The cast of uh, Blue Crush on tomorrow night, right, Drew? Blue Crush. Uh, a couple days later, Insane Clown Posse, then Coldplay, mm -hmm. then Tom Arnold. Nice. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm looking forward to this uh, Blue Crush cast. Well, I'm you keep talking to see about this it. Movie. Yeah. Yes. All right, so uh, now when we left off, we're going to speak to uh, Chad. Right, Chad is 16. Chad is, Chad is 16. He's tired of me bagging on uh, Christianity. Yeah. Chad. Yeah. What's up? I'm just wondering why you just are always dissing on Christianity and religion and everything. Well, I look at it as, um, as sort of a waste of time, really. I mean... I mean, I, I, I used to work with some born-again Christians, and these guys were uh, real jackasses. So I guess I got a bad taste in my mouth from uh, that. But uh, in general, I see it getting in the way of a lot of things, you know? Like the last call we had where, you know, they had the uh, Jewish couple. You know, one side was Jewish, the other side was uh, like Episcopalian or whatever the hell they were, and they couldn't come together because of the religion. It just seems more divisive than anything else, you know? It seems like there's a lot of wars and a lot of terrorism and a lot of, you know, uh, just, there's a lot of nonsense in the world that's based on this. Well, there's a lot of good in the world that's based on it. It just seems like something that was cooked up to keep people busy. Yeah, well, you know, say you uh, spend, uh, how long does every person live? What, 80 years? Roughly. Well, the average person? Roughly, yes. yeah. Say you spend 80 years going through life, following all the rules and everything. When you die, you get to go to heaven for the rest of your life. If you just go your own way, you're going to go to hell, burn forever. Right, right. That now, now, I'm with you on that one, Chad. But you're you're making one big assumption, which is there's a heaven and there's a hell. Yeah, there is a heaven and there's a hell. Well, now I know it's talked about quite a bit. Yeah, it's in the Bible. Oh well, it's in the Bible. Yeah, but the Bible really uh, talks about. Talks about a lot of stuff, you know. Yeah, it's all true. It's all true. All right, yeah. you know, the Earth's two thousand years old, and then uh, someone does some carbon dating and uh, finds out it's ten billion years old. And there's there's a few holes. There's a few holes in the Bible. That's all. They yeah, need whatever. to they, they need to clean it up. All right. Well, listen, Chad, you're going to heaven, so uh, enjoy. But here's the thing, Chad. Here's the question I have for you. Uh, 
if I knew I was going to heaven, I really believed it, and I knew it in my heart of hearts, I'd just go about my my merry way laughing through life. Or either, I would not, I'd be in a I hurry. Would not be, I would, I'd be in a hurry to die, quite yeah. frankly. But I would not be trying to convince other people that they need to come to heaven with me. Dude, I, I want you to go to heaven. I don't want you to go to hell. Because hell is a terrible place. Well, what do, you, what, do you fig, what do you figure hell's got in store for me? I mean, what, what is hell? It's dark, and it hurts. You... You burn well, hold on, hold on. Now, dark, I don't mind dark. Like, if you've yeah, been, I kind of like that. Drew, you know when we travel, I use those eye shades? Oh, I know. You love dark. Okay, do you like... Yeah, the dark, I like. I like dark. Okay, just what imagine, else? imagine pouring gasoline over yourself and burning, mm -hmm. and your flesh coming back and burning all over again for the rest of your life. So it's so it's dark except for I'm like a Roman candle. <laughs> you can't see anything oh, at all. But wait a minute, but Chad, I, there's a hole in your logic already. If everyone is on fire, that place is going to be the lightest place there is. <laughs> You're going to be able to see it from outer space. Wait, you can't you can't see anything. Yeah, I'm just saying if if there's if if me and Hitler and the parking enforcement people. <laughs> And, uh, and, and like Gaddafi and uh, Idi Amin, if we're all aflame, it's going to be, it's going to be, a, 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 it's going to be as so bright that it's going to be blinding. I couldn't imagine it'd be dark and have everyone on fire simultaneously. Yeah, it'd be so bright that you'd be blind. Oh, like oh, you now. oh, blind right now. You oh, oh I, I, no, no, I see what you're saying, Chad. It's like looking at the sun. It's, it's yeah. so bright that you actually, you actually would go blind. Yeah, I guess. Because it's on fire. All right. All right. All right. Now that's coming together. So you're saying you're burning. To me, that's not a good thing. So uh, that's it? You just burn? You just get constantly burned? For the rest of your life. For the for rest of for eternity. And you well, just, now, you're screaming forever. No water, nothing. Well, let me ask you this, Chad. No water. <laughs> <laughs> True, that's rough. Like when you're when you're on fire and you can't even get like a sip, just something. To, you know, you get that cotton mouth when you're on fire, Drew. You need a, you need just a rinse, like when you were playing pop Warner football. Sure. But Chad, I want to ask Chad something else. Are people, let's say uh, uh, Jesse James or uh, Al Capone, or or uh, let's let's go back, let's go back even further, like some of those uh, Romans that uh, crucified Jesus Christ. Have they been burning this whole time? If they have an Ashes in their heart, yeah, they have. Oh man! So I mean, these guys, these guys, uh, you know, these these horrible figures from the past, they've been burning the whole time. I mean, thousands of years. Yes. And what about if you're? What about like caveman days? Yep. But well, what if you didn't know what Jesus was? Are you still burning? Yeah, they made they made sacrifices to God. Yeah, but what I'm saying is, is you know. Millions of years ago, with uh, Cro-Magnum Man, is Cro-Magnum Man burning next to me? Do I have a guy with like a protruding brow on fire next to me, wearing a loincloth? Uh, maybe if he doesn't believe there's a God. Well, yeah, he, but he, I, didn't, he, didn't, he didn't have a Bible. He didn't talk. No, he didn't Adam talk. Eve. There's no Adam and Eve. Adam was the first man. He knew there was a God. He talked to God. Yeah, but but uh, but this this predates this predates the Bible. For instance, this like Cro-Magnum Man, you know. Adam was a I'm just, man, son. I'm, I'm just saying there wasn't hotels with <laughs> the motels with the and stuff. All right, so everyone's burning. And what about the Jews? They burn? If they don't believe in Jesus Christ, their personal Savior, yeah. All right, and uh, everyone else, the Taliban guys and uh, everybody. If they don't everybody, Jesus, Wiccans. Heart, yeah. All right, there'll be a lot of, a lot of folks. Out. You're saying the majority of the planet is going to be burning alongside of me? Uh, yeah, pretty much. Well, that's rough. So I just want to say that, to everyone out there, just... Read your Bible and believe it. Jesus yeah, is no, your he, personal savior. And you're going to go to heaven. Yeah, no, I, no, I, I'm with you now, Chad. Because that, that sounds like a bad way to go. To and 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 Drew, the notion of burning and then reburning skin that you've already burnt off, that that really sounds like a cruel and unusual punishment, does yeah. it not? Yes, it does. Uh, the burning the first time around, all right. Uh, yeah. I could I could see that. Oh, the Jews are going to be pissed. <laughs> but imagine, imagine uh, Jews Jews complain when the entree's cold. <laughs> imagine how they're going to com complain when they're on fire. <laughs> uh, who who would complain more than a Jew on fire, Drew? <laughs> and and what about the Hasidim? Oh, those Jews are going to burn first, and they got those huge beards. Oh my God, they're going to go up like ZZ Top. Yeah, but they got to grow them out and reburn them. Ah, uh, Chad wasn't clear on that. 
That's what you want to ask? Chad only said the flesh reburns. <laughs> but what about those huge, big ZZ Top beards on the Hasidic Jews? Do those reburn? Yeah, everything. Reburns, reburns the beards. Okay, also a lot of uh, body well, uh, body hair on the Jewish women as yeah. well that's going to burn. All right, well, I'll just be with the uh, Jews and the Taliban and uh, the rest of the non-believers burning in hell. Uh, I'm going to have to get an ISDN line set up, though, because we got to continue doing the show. Of course. Here's how the show's going to go, Troop. We'll just sign up, and I'll just be going, ah! <laughs> I'm For, burning. And then during the commercials, I'll complain about my family to Drew, and then we'll go back on the, ah! No, really, I was in Baker, so I've, I think I've been to hell. Yeah. It was it was 118 today. But think, all right. Think, it, it, I, I'm not sure hell will be such a bad place for you, because Minka and all your buddies will be down there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, you know, getting a lap dance when you're on fire, Drew. Might not work. Yeah. Especially when she's on fire, too. All right. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, Chad, Chad makes a very, very compelling argument for Christianity. Very compelling. Okay. All right. Let's take, I'm glad we cleared that up, by the way, Drew. Yeah. Good times. And uh, we're going to take ourselves a little break. I'm going to, uh, I'll tell you what I'm going to do, Drew. Mm. I'm just going to light my sock on fire just to see, just to see. To what it feels like? It, yeah, well, here's my... Well, here's you're going to work your way up. You're going to, you know, right? That's right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know when you get into a hot tub? Yeah, yeah. You don't dive in. Right. You, you sit on the edge. You put your feet in so you kind of acclimate. That's right. And then burn, later burn, you slide in. Burn one this sock. This is what I'm going to... I'm going to burn one sock yeah, so I can yeah. start getting used to my uh, eternity in hell. All right, good. You'll, All be, right, you'll, we'll be, be, you'll be in shape by the time you get there. Yeah, that's right. We'll yeah. be back after this. Line. Yeah, 1-800-L-O-V-E-191. Who's running the board over there tonight? No, I will, I will not admit to who's running the board. It's not Anderson. All right, it's Ken? Hmm. Elvis or Ken? Well, they both both mucking around there. All right, well, tell uh, either one of them uh, when we come into these breaks to give me the uh, cue so I can uh, know when to speak. Uh, all right? The one that Anderson does. Here you go. <laughs> Anderson tries to scare me into not talking. Uh, anyway, love line, everybody. I'm in uh, Las Vegas. Drew's in Los Angeles. And uh, the uh, cast of Blue Crush, the big surf movie, going to be in uh, tomorrow night. So let's uh, hop back to the phones. What do you say there, Drew? This is Jessica. She's 14. That's you. That's Jessica. right. Yes, yes, that's Hello? you. Hello? Yeah, hi. What's up? Jessica. Hello? Hi. Hi. Okay. Hey. Um, I'm a lesbian, and um, my parents are, like, really religious. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how to tell him. Like, I've, like, given hints to my mom. And, like, my best friend is my girlfriend. And, like, my parents love her, right? Uh -oh. But I'm trying to give them hints. But they're not, they're just saying, like, oh, it's just a phase. But how do I, like, really, like... What have you, what hints have you given them exactly? Like, um, I've, like, told, I've told them, like, Crystal, like, oh, Crystal, my girlfriend, <laughs> that we've, like, tried, experimented, and I... You've told your parents that? Yes. How'd they take that? Oh, they, my mother was pissed. <laughs> and she's just telling me, oh, it's just a phase, but I know. <laughs> Why did you tell her that? Well, because I want my mother to know. It's like, I mean, that's like me. Mm -hmm. She has mm -hmm. to know. She has no. to know. <laughs> that is, no, you're, that you're, is payback you're, for something. You're mad at your parents. What well, they do yeah, to you? Because they don't, and they're like really religious, and they're like thinking like I'm like a devil child. Mm. Oh, you may be. Well, you know, uh, hey, Jessica... Huh? I don't want to scare you, but I, I just got the uh, lowdown on hell from a guy <laughs> named Chad. Uh, evidently, uh, it's, uh, it's nonstop combustion over there. <laughs> I mean, I, I thought lighting farts was funny, but apparently your whole body catches on fire. Oh and, and, and it never stops. <laughs> and, and you reburn, you understand? That's great. <laughs> yeah, once your skin is burnt off your bones, you know, it reforms and then it burns again. And apparently the guys with the beards, the beard... Continues to burn and grow and, beer and burn. Yeah, it's like well, it's like those novelty birthday candles. <gasps> I see. You, you know, you, you can't blow the old Jew's beard out, Drew. <laughs> yeah, so so you, you know, you got that to look forward to. <laughs> no, what else going on, Jessica? Are you adopted? No. Right. What religion are your parents? Christian. Uh huh. And, and uh, are you angry at them? Not about the no, we're lesbian stuff. Fine. Have they ever struck you or beaten you or anything? Well, discipline. What does that mean? 
like they spanked me when I was younger. Did they use an object to spank you? Um, a belt or their uh, hands. Okay, that's not discipline. That's child abuse. Okay. Yeah, a little belt. Uh, yeah, belt. discipline is spend some time in your room alone and a time out. Oh. That, that's discipline. Or discipline is taking away something you enjoy, a toy or a privilege. Yeah. Hitting a child with a belt is child abuse. And my parents, uh, Drew. Yeah. My parents didn't. I didn't have you know toys or bikes or. Well, any, hell, they didn't, they didn't have, give they, me anything. Yeah. My parents, they would take away oxygen. Oh, I, that's, well, that's, all, that's all they had. Yeah. Well, they, they certainly. They they had. Nor could they pick up a belt because they, they didn't use belts, did they? No, no. They they have to take away the atmosphere. Right. There's no, there's no TV privileges. There's nothing. There's no movies not to watch. There's no toys to put away. They just, they have to take away air. That's all they had. I think uh, they took away water. They took basic elements. They the took carbon, away your toilet at like one that. point. Oh, please, Drew, don't make me cry. So, Jessica. Yeah. Uh, why don't you do this with, as far as your parents go? Why don't you? We want to bet Dad was the one doing a lot of the the belt work too. Where's Dad? Where is he? He was using the belt. Just shut up. Where's Dad, Jessica? Um, I don't know. He's around. Yeah, he's around. Yeah? Do you love him? Yeah, he spoils me, though. He's like, I'm like his little angel. Except, when, like, he, except my... when he picks the belt up and starts going at you. Well, that was like years ago. Yeah, well, that's there when your brain was plastic and things get well, wired into it. I was like seven. Yeah, but that's there when your there. brain is the most affected by those kinds of experiences. Well, oh, well, what? What, are you, what are you talking about? Yeah, I don't know what the extent of that was. It, was it a couple of times or was it often? Oh, whenever like I got in trouble, like it was like it, serious. They would like hit me with a belt. But how many times yeah. that happen? Oh God, I don't know. A lot. Adam, all right, Adam, all right, that's bad. They, they apparently hey, get arrested I, I, for that. And well, listen, this goes on a lot in this country, unfortunately. Well, here's what you get. I, so I'm here's what they get. They, they, they she should talk to her dad about her sexual orientation. Go ahead and let him have it. This is this is your belt you're wielding right now. Mm -hmm. That's true, and this is worse than any any pain on one's rear end for a dad. Yeah, that's right. it. Let no. him have it. Go ahead. No, no, come on, Drew. It, let's see, they're going to make life horrible for you if you get into this with them. Why don't you just Re realize? Them. Here's the reality. Realize the reason you want to tell them is for the very reason I'm sort of making light of is that you, this is your belt you're wielding and you want to get at them with it. But the fact is, you're into a power struggle with them that you will lose. And know who you are. That's fine. Keep that to yourself. Fortune do not come out and announce at the dinner table what they're doing in their sexual lives. And they don't need to know it. And unless you want to be miserable. Later on, once you have a supportive network, you're not dependent on them, fine. If you, you know what they're like, you know he's abusive, you know that your mom's going to freak out, why make yourself miserable? So like what age? Like when I moved out? Yeah. When yeah. you go to college. When you move out, you let it all hang out. All right. Thank you. All right. All right. Good times. Yeah, listen, everybody, try not to talk to your parents until you move out. That was my motto. Kathleen. It, it, yeah. That's my policy, and it worked fine for me. 16. Kathleen Hi. or Colleen? Hi. Kathleen. Hi. Kathleen. Um, my problem is I'm extremely shy, and I can't, like, go up to people or start a conversation, and it's affecting my social life really bad. Mm -hmm. And ever since I moved to Utah, I haven't had any friends since I was ten. Ten? Wow. Is that when you moved to Utah? Yes. Are you? You go to you go to school? I used to. Now I'm on homeschool now. No. Oh, what happened? I was just I had too many problems going to school. Like what? What happened? People, oh. I getting into fights with people and stuff. So I just went to homeschool. What were the fights about? Fights about just stupid stuff. Like what? Like getting in the fights about um, how come I can't call you the N word, just racist stuff. How come they can't call you that? Yes. How come black people can call each other the N word, but white people can't? Yeah. Well, why? Oh, okay. Yeah, I see your point. So there was obviously a lot of this was racially. So you're, you're black. Yes. And you're in Utah. Yes. Were you the only black person at your school? Yes. Ooh. Wow. Yeah, it, it, it sounds bad, but, you know, you can score points, too, by that way, you know. You, mm -hmm. you can be the one cool person in the whole school, mm -hmm. depending, <laughs> depending on what the uh, school's orientation is. But, okay, here's the deal. First off, when you're, when you're home and you're being homeschooled, it's hard to make a lot of friends, except yeah. for those, you know, magical little gnomes that tell you to burn, burn, burn everything. Huh. Like, yeah. you know, I had when I was a kid. So uh, you're going to have to step outside the house, obviously, if you want to make some friends. 
when you're homeschooled, don't they have uh, networks for other people that are homeschooled to, like, socialize, where you guys have, like, homeschooled mixers or something? No, you just, they send your work in the mail, and then you do it, and you mail it back. Wow. Can you not go back to school if you want to go back to school? Yeah, I can, but I'm scared. Well, what? Now, what are you scared of? I'm just scared that I won't fit in. Are your parents contemplating leaving the vicinity? Might they no, move? No. What are they doing there? Well, my dad got a job here, so that's why we moved here from California. And he knows how much you're suffering? Not really. My mom does, but my dad doesn't. Well, why don't you, I, I mean, here, here's the problem, I, I think, uh, Kathleen. I think, ultimately, you're going to have to integrate back into school. And uh, I know it's a scary proposition, and maybe you can meet, and your parents can meet with some counselors and discuss whatever fears you have. But ultimately, it seems like you're going to have to go to school and interact with other people and be with other people, because ultimately, that's what you have to do in society. Yeah. You know, and I know it feels safe at home, but it's safe because it's lonely. Yeah. I mean, there's no one around to hurt you, but there's no one around to love you either. Oh, Drew, write that down. Okay. No write that down, Drew. You, but no one around to love you. Oh, yeah, poetry. Sheer genius. That's poetry. Sheer genius. So, I mean, it, it's true, though, and Drew, will you back me up on this, goddammit, that you have to sort of take chances, and sometimes you take the chance, whether it's in a relationship whether it's an intimate relationship or whether it's a platonic relationship, you take the chance of being hurt. Mm -hmm. You take the chance of sort of extending your hand and have someone just cross their arms and look at you it. You have to find a way also to not make this a self-fulfilling prophecy, that, that you project a, an aggression or an anger that provokes people in some way. Okay. You've got to be really open to the vulnerability of having relationships with people. Okay. And, 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 but you need a lot of support. You need a real supportive network. I don't know how you develop that. And, when you have no okay. friends. I, I would talk to you, If I were you, I would talk to my parents about getting back into school. And people are sort of, uh, I mean, I'm not so old. I remember high school. You know, the people are a little standoffish. But people are sort of scared and feel, feel as uncomfortable and as awkward as you do half the time. And you, you can make friends. It's not that big a deal. Okay. It's plenty. Of, the school is school's filled with about 10%, maybe 5% cool people who seem to know everybody. And then there's the other 95% who just are looking for a life preserver to grab onto. Am I right, Drew? More poetry, Adam. Daniel yeah, 16. You, you, you were one of the cool guys, though, right? Not really. Student body president? Yeah. Huh? BMOC. Hey, you know what was weird about that period of time? That was when those kinds of things were not exactly cool. You know what I'm saying? Remember in the 70s? It was not cool to do exceptional things. Yes, I, I, I exceptional. You know what I mean? So to stand out in any way, you're supposed to sort of... Uh, no, you're kissing the man's ass. Exactly. Yeah, th it was this way with being a cheerleader, right. with being on the football team. That's right. Yeah, you, you were supposed to be burning your draft card. That's and, uh, right. Listening to Donovan, not cutting your hair and getting in line. That's and right. dancing for the man. Thank you. Mm. Danielle. Who's on the phone? Danielle. Yeah? Hi. What? Hi. He's 16. What's going um, on? Well, my boyfriend, he said that if I don't sleep with him, he's going to go with my friend. <laughs> I don't know if one guy's too bad. Yeah. What? Yeah. Here's what I'd like to I'd like to make this announcement right now, Drew. All right, put her on hold, please. Okay. Make the announcement. I would like to make the announcement to have... Mm -hmm of the female populace of the United States and uh, parts of Canada, that if you don't sleep with me, I will sleep with the other half. <laughs> what do you think? Uh, my work. If, if, uh, if uh, let me do some quick math. If like the, um, if, if like the 65 million of you bitches uh, don't sleep with me, I swear to Christ I'll sleep with the other 65 million. Oh, now they're ready. All right, I think, and that—that's not even—that's not even including Canada, Drew. Daniel. Probably, probably more like seventy bit. Come on, billion, what million. craziness is that, Danielle? What kind of an ass is this guy anyway? He's not. Like he buys me like flowers. And if that, if he buys you flowers, and he's in. I'd like to, to make the friend. announcement to half the female population that I they they can expect flowers if I, they let me have sex with them. Sixty-five million roses. Here they come. Well, that's only one rose. I'm buying a dozen each. 
Okay. So, so this is We're in the billions. <laughs> this could be into the billions yeah. of flowers. FTD man is going to just uh, burn his nuts off trying to deliver <laughs> this stuff. Uh, Daniel, you sound like you're uh, damaged. Yeah, six, seven years old. Did you get abused when you were younger? No. Twelve. No. Twelve. No. Nothing. No. Uh, no sexual abuse. No physical. You didn't abuse. have a nineteen-year-old boyfriend when you were twelve. No. Did you? No. Mm. No. Okay. Are you a virgin? Yeah. Okay, well... You are, okay. And is your dad around? Yeah. And do you love him? Kind of. Uh-oh. What's he been doing What's to you? Well, nothing. He's just kind of an asshole. Why? I don't know. He just says some pretty messed up things to me a lot. Like he's going to sleep with your friend if you... I mean, you're, <laughs> you know, how much more of an asshole do you need? How much more asshole does someone need to be than your current boyfriend? No, but he's nice to me because, like, he says sweet things to me. Like, when well, I was why don't why don't you want to sleep? Why don't you sleep? Because I don't know. I just don't feel like I'm ready for it. All right, but just understand that you're not ready. And if he can't handle that, and if he does something awful because of it, then he's an asshole, and How he doesn't deserve a relationship with you. Yeah. How old is that boyfriend? I wonder. Seventeen. She's 16. seventeen. She's sixteen. The amazing thing when she's got when they have an asshole parent. They don't hear the assholishness in their in their peer partner. Mm -hmm. you, you know, it just it's like doesn't even register. It's like, well, that's just what they expect from a male. No, it's true, and I can't figure out why she's clinging to her virginity at sixteen when she's in love with this guy. Yeah, why, so maybe she has a couple of good instincts. Well, I'm not in love with him. I just like him a lot. Oh well, look, if you're not in love with him and he's threatening to sleep with your friends and I don't know if he's checked this with your friends by the way sometimes you gotta ask them you know you can't just go in and hump them uh, if he's threatening to sleep with the friends and you're not that in love with him and you're not ready to have sex with him then don't let him go yeah that's it he's out end of story okay it's a very good training and Drew let's give the ladies a little pep talk about <sighs> asserting themselves and trends in life here's what I'm saying okay the, uh, you're 15, you're 16 years old, you're female, you come from a less than happy family, maybe dad drinks a little, maybe he was absent, maybe he doesn't love you the way he should. You come to that fork in the road, 15 and a half, 16 years old, right? Yeah. Do you go down that side where you just are servient to men, you make them happy, you dance for them, everyone becomes your daddy. You subjugate you yourself. Do, yes, you do things you don't want to do. Because once you do that, like a fork in the road, once you travel down that, you can't just cut across and go back to the right. other side. You start having increasing levels of shame, and you deal with the shame by doing more stuff for guys. You just get awful. further down the road, okay? But the good news, and you're going the wrong direction. And it, with each month that passes, you get a little bit further from the fork and a little bit further from the right direction. But if you go the right direction, that has... the. As negative as the negative is, that's as positive as this is. If that's every right. 15, 16 year old who listens to the show, who calls the show, said, you know what? Wait a minute. This guy's a prick. I don't need this. Yeah, I why, got am I, why am I thinking about how to make him why happy? Why am I even thinking about him? it? You, you know what? Go screw yourself, pal. Have fun with one of my friends. Take off. You do that, then you send, you send a very nice message, not to him, but to yourself. Yeah. That this is the way you're going to conduct yourself in life. And magically, she'll be more attractive to guys. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. All right. This is uh, Tracy, 29. Tracy. Yeah. What's up? What's up there? What's up there? Tracy, go. Hi. My Hi. name is Tracy, and this is for the girl that um, called about being pregnant at 15. Right. I can't remember her name, but um, I just want to tell you. I just yes. want to tell her that. Adoption is one of the best things in the world. This is something um, you did? I did adoption when I was 18. I was date raped at my senior prom. Wow. And um, I was having a very hard time with it. And um, I have a twin sister that got pregnant at 15 also. And she missed out on a lot of things. She missed out on her junior prom. She, she missed she out. Couldn't, she, she couldn't she get raped at her prom. Pardon me? All right, true. That was. I said, it's it's ironic that she missed out on her prom when you were raped at your prom. 
Right. Well, it's not, I mean, not much. Not missed, much of a selling point. Yeah, she just missing missed, out on something you're raped at. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, she just missed out on a whole bunch of stuff. I mean, her friends didn't want to be around her anymore, and the saddest part about it is my parents are raising her daughter now. Mm. And of course, I, of course. Yeah, and you know, it's always the the upper chain that has to take care of the kids when you're not old enough yourself to take care of yourself. Mm-hmm. I mean. At 15, you can't really get a job. You can't really pay for diapers. You can't pay for of formula. Right. And well, that's a that's a very it's a it, it sounds very obvious, but if you think of it this way, yeah, if you can't take care of yourself, how the hell are you going to take care of someone else? And I know it sounds really cliche, but I never really thought of it in terms of we think of 15 year olds like going. Well, she's not qualified to take care of a young child, but yeah. at 15, at 15. You die if you're out on left alone yourself. That's exactly. right. That's of right. Of course, exactly. your parents are going to have to raise the kid. They're raising you. They have just do the math. They have yeah. to raise the kid. Yeah. Well, what I did was an open adoption, and what an open adoption is is where you make the rules. You you choose the parents for your child. You choose what's the rules, what's the guidelines for your child. I got to name my child. Wow. The name that I wanted to name my son, I got to have interviews with over 300 and some odd people. And I uh, three, hold on, 300 and some odd people you interviewed? At least. Before you picked one. And I picked one. Yeah. Whoa, 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 wait. You physically spoke to that many people or you I looked through like case spoke. files? I spoke face to face, no telephone, no nothing face-to-face with these people. It was an open adoption. I hold, had on, hold on, hold on. Drew, put her on hold that's for a, a second. Yeah, hold that's on. a good thing. I mean, if there the mom... Hold on. I can't believe that you personally interviewed 350 couples. That's a, that's an inspiring thing. Listen, you, you, you'd shop around and look at several dozen cars before you bought now, a car. You, you 350 car dealerships? Yeah. No, you go to three. But it's, um, it's listen. Drew, they, I'm saying she couldn't have spoken to 350 people. All right, let's ask. Okay. Tracy. Well, I mean, there was at least, there was hundreds of people that I spoke to. And it was, it was a daily all right. basis. So this, see how this is going? How many years did it take to go through all those people? It was, it was a nine-month period. I mean, I, when I found out that I was pregnant. So you did like I, five, five different families a day? It was more of. <laughs> Drew, don't screw her with the math because no. it's not going to work. Drew, I'm, I, I, I'm honestly telling you that I drilled so many people because yeah. this was my son's life. I know. I think it's great. And I do, too. I, I made sure that I put him in the best environment that I knew that I, could, that I couldn't give him. Yeah. I mean, fantastic. I was there. I was 18 years old. There was no way that I could take care of a child. Yeah. And there was somebody out there that could. Uh, it's good. Good. I so. took my time, yeah. and I took every step possible to try to figure out who was going to be the best parent of my child. Did your parents right. help you out? What, did, 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 no, my parents were totally against it. Did, so and, they didn't and help what, And so now, now how your child is now 11 years old, 10 mm-hmm. years old? He's 10. And, and is he, how often do you see him? I get a picture every year. How are things working out? It's wonderful. Right. I mean, he, he oh. is the best looking kid. He is best well taken care of. They live in Sandy, Utah. I know their phone number. I mean, it's an open adoption to where the only thing I don't have to do is show up there. Wow. I mean, we, me and the mother, Michelle, email each other at least once a month. That's just great. Just for updates. That's great. And in, you mean, you said the only thing you don't have to do is show up there? I, I, the only thing I don't do is show up there. Right. Right. So the, could, could you? But Adam, the idea here is the purpose of the call is to help other people understand. No, what this, I, is, this is this is. Yeah. Do, do could you show up there? I wouldn't want to. No, I would. I wouldn't want to interrupt in that kind of lifestyle. It's just me and the parents that have the, the relationship. The relationship. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I understand that. I think that's good. All right, good. That's fantastic. God bless you. Yeah. Right. And okay. I, and what, I, what? I, I, look. Let her, let her give her last comment. What? I just want everybody to know that adoption is more than, you know, just through a church or through anything. If you get an attorney and you put it through the paper, you know, you have plenty more options than what, you know, a church or, 
you know, um, you know, private organizations can do for you hmm. because they hold you out on so much because they choose your parents. They choose the interviews. They choose everything. And with an open adoption, you make the rules. Okay. All right. And how, the okay, okay. We got it. How's, yeah, well, <laughs> you're, you're not really parent, but you get to interview the potential parents. You're but how's, how's, how's what? Call, call getting a picture of your kid once a year being, a, being the parent. Yeah. But what I want to know how Tracy's doing now. Does she have a family? Does she have children? Is life going okay? Yeah, she... Ha no, you. Me? Yeah. I have a little boy that's four, and I just got married this May. Fantastic. And I've got a little girl that's five. Whoa, whoa, what? Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. In the marriage, I just got a little girl that was five. All right. I have a little boy that was four. Great. And so, I mean, everything's working out great for me now. Okay. Thank you, baby. Drew, get rid of her. That's wonderful. No, that's good. And she's where is she calling from? Petticoat Junction? What's that train? There's a train going through her living room. I there was. <laughs> it's crazy. I mean, really, like, she they had to move the furniture <laughs> so the train could get by. Hey, you know what? Uh, I don't know why people like Tracy always drive me nuts. It's that cadence, you know. Yeah. They always, uh, they're the type of people who use the word home. <laughs> He's driving me nuts. I see him on the news once in a while, and they go, I let this person into my home. And I was, I don't know. Why does that drive me nuts, Joe? Why is that cadence? It's, it's why is that Tracy? A little bit of the right. Is it that, that cadence? Yeah. Is that Tracy cadence? Would that drive you nuts? Yeah. Okay. But as she interviewed personally 350 people. I don't want to make fun of her. Here's the point. Give the kid up for adoption. She did the right thing. Yeah. I thought it was, <laughs> I thought it was ironic though, Drew, and I I felt bad about mentioning. It, but the fact that she brought up her uh, kid sister missing her prom oh. because she got pregnant, and you know, then went on to say that she was date raped at her prom. Probably not the greatest example of things you miss out on. Yeah, indeed not. Things you're raped at. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. But yes, everyone give your kids up for adoption. As everyone. a matter of fact, Drew, right you've now had those, you've had those kids long enough. Okay. Uh, nice and nice. You want diversity, right? Yeah. Uh, th I think they've got the gist of uh, where you and your old lady are coming from. But you can do another family. Okay. They're still not too late to learn a language. Oh, in your in your new world, yeah. You can do a Mexican family. In your, your new world order that could be how things go. You get kids for ten years and you switch, swap, you swap around. Yeah, mm -hmm. you get some new kids of your own. People gain greater empathy for one another's cultural values that way. And, Drew, and, and the you, males won't be so apt to play games like get to the back of the bus. And, and Drew, look at it this way. Think how impressed that new group of kids are going to be when they find out, like, you're a doctor. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, your kids live on a big, they live in a big house. They got a big room. They got a big screen TV. Daddy drives a $70,000 car, and they could give a rat's ass. But that new family you get, they're going to be all, they're going to be, their eyes are going to be as big as saucers. They're going to be, oh, my God, this is where we live? Oh, my, ooh, look at the swimming pool. Oh, look at Drew. He's a doctor. <laughs> yeah. That's what you need, Drew. You drop those kids off with me for a few weeks. I straighten them out. Oh, oh boy. They'll come back with a whole new attitude. Oh. Girl. Look, Drew's little girl complaining because she's not, uh, she's not uh, figure skating in Paris this year. Jesus Christ. All right, let's take ourselves a uh, little break. What do you say? Perfect. And we'll be right back. Thanks. Buddy, it's Loveline. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Oh, Jesus. Ken, you got to turn down that mic in there. You blew my ears out, for Christ's sake. Drew, do I do nothing but complain ever? I'm sort of... No. <laughs> what's yeah, what's new you. about that? Thank you. Uh, but I'm impressed that you've hung in as well as you have. Are you not loaded when you came on? At least not, not discernibly. And didn't well, burn thank, you. Out. And you, thank you. Thank you. Yes, quite nice. I, I'm very tired. I, I did get, like I said, I got loaded uh, early in the day on the bus, but I began to uh, mellow my scene out as uh, we got closer to Vegas, and uh, you know, ate a little dinner alone and uh, took a cab. And uh, I actually saw Lynette today at ABC. Now, what were you doing at ABC? Uh, meeting. Yeah. Yeah. Good well, time. you got going, Drew. Oh, you tons, get, tons, Adam, tons. You got to get back on TV. Drew is, uh, Drew, uh, people don't know it, but Drew is a huge ham. <laughs> he was, uh, Really? Well, Drew, here, here's, here's what I would say about you. Yeah. I think you would probably want to be on TV more than me. 
All things being equal. All things being equal. Uh, well, here's, the, here's where it distills down. I like working. You don't. Right. But you, you would like to work in front of the camera. Mm-hmm. Yes. Well, nothing wrong with that. No, not, I like not, it. Not, uh, this was uh, the topic of my therapy today, which <laughs> is I don't like being seen. <laughs> So the whole prospect of being on TV is a painful one for me. No, I, I, I'm intrigued by the medium. Mastering you, the medium. No, 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 no. True. Please, please. What, did you get a publicist? No, no, I do. I'm just very interested you, in mastering but, but, that. But no, no, no. But Drew, no, no, there's no, no shame. No, no, no. No, no, no. no, no, no. no. Listen no, no, to no, me. Listen to me. No, no, no. Hey! You enjoy performing in being in front of an audience. And there's nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. I think you probably always have. You, mm -hmm. you sung and when you were uh, younger. You performed in school plays and things like that. Right, right. Uh, there, there's, I there's like public speaking. I love public you, speaking. You, you like yeah. doing the public speaking. You enjoy an audience. And it's not for purely selfish reasons. You feel that you have something to say. God knows I've been with you for seven and a half years. I still don't know what it is. Huh? But you feel like you have something to say, and, and it's an important message, and you want to share it with people and get paid, and everyone will be happy. And there's nothing, there's nothing wrong with that. Good time. I'm just saying, go ahead and admit that no, no, you I, enjoy I, being I in front of a crowd. Absolutely. Perfectly healthy. I wish I had more of that. Why don't we, we bring that up? Wait, no, wait a minute. There was some point we are going to make about this. Oh, you I saw it at ABC. I saw it at. Okay, right. Yes, okay. my fiance at okay. ABC. Good times. Oh, yeah. I, I, was, I wanted to say is that one of the central moments in my television experience was sitting next to you. We'd done, like, the lost episodes of Loveline many, many years ago. And you just look at me and go, what in the hell's the matter with you? You're, you're like, a, you're like a, an, an, a wooden Indian outside a tobacco shop. What is this? Remember that? Oh, really? I said that to you, huh? Oh, you said, like, what? You've been doing a radio show for 10 years. What is, what is the hell's the matter with you? <laughs> and, it, and it worked, right? Yeah, it you, took you about became, six months, yeah. You became slightly less wooden the next show. No, no. Six months. Who are we speaking to now? Jose. Yes. Yes. What's up, Jose? 16. Yes. All right. What's up? Well, every time I put a condom on, my penis goes limp. <laughs> All right. Well, that's a pretty common thing. That's one of the reasons guys don't use condoms. They don't like how it feels. They can't perform right. And Adam actually has a solution. Well, his one of his great inventions could potentially be a solution to your problem. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, in my youth, I would have told it to you, but I'm just too tired. Mm -hmm. No, look, I, I, I mean this, and I'm surprised that no one else ever brings this up. There's two things. I, right. would, I would practice putting the condom on when I was alone. Master of the condom. That's not a comedy answer. Practice, you know, get an erection, get yourself going, get the juices flowing, and then pop the condom on and finish yourself off with the condom on. If you could get used to that, if your penis could get used to being erect, stopping the action, pulling the condom out of the nightstand, placing the condom on your penis, and then finishing to the point of orgasm when you were alone, I guarantee you could handle it with a woman. Yep. Now, you had another solution, too, if you recall, Adam. That was the uh, condom uh, quick loader. That's right. That was uh, something that bolted onto the side of the nightstand, sort of like uh, when you... Back in the day when you put a bike rack on the bumper of your car. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It sort of clips on, and it actually holds the condom. Because the problem is, is the guys, they get nervous. And what you, what you don't want when you're in the throes of, of, uh, of uh, eroticism is... It's time to think. Fumbling it's, around. You're, it screws everything. It screws everything up. You got to flip the light on. You got to get the thing. You got to make sure it's facing the right direction, and then the penis goes away. <laughs> but if you had this quick loader on the side of the thing, it was actually it's preloaded. It's sort of like uh, you know, it's like uh, it, it's like if someone took your pants and held them up, and you slid down a pole and dove into them foot first. You know. This is the same with your penis. You just dip it right into the side of this thing. It's like, psh, psh, and it's on. Okay. I, I, haven't, I haven't worked out the bugs on it. A uh, few guys injured themselves uh, during some of the preliminary testing, which couple we of, do. A couple of foul I lost. Yeah, a couple Sluff, of foul I lost. Sluffed. Thank God we uh, test in the uh, former Soviet uh, <laughs> Republic so that uh, there's no lawsuits, things like that aren't as big a problem. Still, we're at least uh, a couple of years away from this thing hitting the market. So, in the meantime, grab some extra condoms, practice putting them on. Okay. All right. Thank All you. Right. Good Thank times you. there, Jose. Uh, Jose, good times. That's this right. Is, uh, yeah, use that condom. Benjamin, 20. Hello. Hi, Adam. 
Uh, hello, is, Benjamin. Is, oh, I have. My, my problem is that um, for about maybe a year, I've been I've been atheist for probably since I was 15. I've been in church for like, what, five years? So there are people, your family members are not atheists? No, they're Catholic. Okay. Uh-huh. And, um, well, recently about last, I think last year started that um, uh, I had a class, electronics, and a Christian... African American, whose dad was a pastor. Mm -hmm. uh, I said that I was atheist because he kept on nagging me about his religion. Like he even brought the Bible and right. kept on saying lines. I thought he was kind of weird about that, but um, I, I I told him that I was atheist. I didn't want to hear that crap, and then he started to say stuff like, um, "Hey, you're gonna go to hell, basically." That right. you, don't, you don't love yourself. You're a, you're a bad person. You're probably molesting kids or something like that. True, true, probably true. Where's this going, Benjamin? Well, I want to have like uh, I want to get advice because pretty much at, when I was in Santa Monica College, I um, uh oh, junior I, I, had a, I was kind of kicked out of that school. Why? Right. Because uh, same confrontation that um, uh, a person. I don't know. They keep like I'm. I have. I have like. Uh, they all follow me or something because I. Uh, he was uh, saying religious stuff and showed me some kind of a, you know those uh, booklets that are basically pages mm -hmm. about religion. Right. I threw it in his face when he just showed it to me. So. Oh. Uh -huh. And they cons they consider it like. Uh, I don't know some kind of um, hate crime. Yeah. yeah. Pretty much. All right. What What's the question for us, Benjamin? Question is, how could I conf like uh, avoid no. these stuff? Yeah, well, <laughs> it always happen to me. Uh, yeah, how uh, do you avoid religious zealots uh, throwing literature in your face? Yeah, probably, well, well, like probably just keep your mouth shut. That's a question. Well, uh, it that's, not, a lot. that's not a problem. No, it happens a lot because you're a troublemaker and you find it. Right. Any, any, any people. If you're in a situation where you seem to find yourself in trouble a lot, it's you. Yeah. If you get into a lot of fights, it's you. Yeah. If you get into it, if you get into scraps and confrontations with people, it's all you. I have no idea what this guy's problem is. Drew? Well, he's just uh, empathizing with you and the guy that was attacking you earlier. Thank you. Yeah. Drew, do you want to know what the voice of junior college sounds like? Benjamin. Just imagine that voice. Imagine now there's 3,000 Benjamins. Oh. And you guys are all in the same place. Oh. What do the women sound like? There's an exchange of acting. That was a woman. Oh, my God. You guys are trying to have some sort of exchange of academic ideas. You know, like he takes that thing with, with uh, it's got uh, letters on it, a uh, book. Yeah, yeah. And uh, they keep it in that place with the roof on it where they keep the books, uh, library. That's right. Everything becomes like password. <laughs> The kids go to this place where uh, this guy stands and he it's a ch uh, with this, some chalk, chalkboard, yeah, classroom, uh-huh, yeah, bingo, bingo. <laughs> uh, these guys, they, they're, uh, they go, it sounds like prudent, uh, student, students, yes, that's right. <laughs> what the, this is junior college, everybody. This is what, this is the voice of junior college. Please, Benjamin, you sound like a good atheist. You know, I always like a good atheist, but forget about this junior college. You, you learn yourself a trade. You learn something like underwater welding. Mm. You understand? You go to school for eight months. Next thing you know, you're making 65 bucks an hour uh, doing uh, keel repair at the harbor. <laughs> All right. Good Drew, what percentage, what percentage of our audience knows what a keel is? Two percent. Two? Half a percent? I got to hey, believe we, it's we talked about Plimsolls plim 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 last night. <laughs> <laughs> the show is taking a turn for the maritime. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's take ourselves a little break. Okay, what Mark Twain. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Blimsoll. We'll be back after this. Hey, everybody. Love line. I'm Adam Corolla. That is uh, Doc Drew. I'm hey. in Nevada. Yeah. And, and you night. are organizing a class action lawsuit against that very state. That's right. More details as they arrive. Uh, tomorrow night, Blue Crush is going to be in here. The cast from Blue Crush, new surf movie that I want to see. I just had a, uh, a great time. As you know, Drew, 
Last time I did the show from uh, Las Vegas, the cab that I called never arrived. Oh, yeah, right. And I ended up walking down uh, oh, Sahara yes. Boulevard. For yes, like I was talking miles. to you while you did that. Remember? I was on the cell phone with Drew just walking down the street as uh, drunken traffic blew past me. Uh, this time it was funny. I said, all right, I'm going to call this cab company. <laughs> Oh, what is, is there any angrier woman than the uh, cab dispatch Ooh. broad? Ooh. You know what I mean? I'm, In Vegas, you know I'm talking about like, are. yeah, sort of leathery, burnt, burnt from the sun, years of sun and chain smoking, and just had an ass full of humanity. So I call up. I'm like, uh, yeah, um, I I need a cab at about uh, midnight. Uh, this is you know, 50, yeah, it's quarter to midnight. Uh, sir, we don't take time calls. Oh. Uh, uh, well, by the way, I like when they sort of, sort of speak in their lingo, which doesn't mean ask to anybody else, but you sort of get the idea through their tone that you're not going to get what you want. Mm -hmm. We don't take time calls, sir. Oh, um, well, uh, where are you going? Uh, well, I'm at 665 West. No, where are you going? Oh. I, I was like, uh, well, how do you... Why? What do you mean, where are you going? You don't know where I'm at. Right. <laughs> uh, why don't I tell you where I'm at? We don't take time calls. I, I said, well, well, how does it work then? Well, you call up, you order the cab, and 15 or 20 minutes later, the cab will be there. Oh. I said, well, that's what I'm doing now. She's like, no, you call when you need the cab. <sighs> I'm like, well, I need the cab in 15 minutes, you bitch. Oh. No, no, you call when you need the cab. And 15 minutes later, the cab will be there. But you don't call. We don't take time calls. I'm like, all right, I need the cab now. <laughs> She's like, no. Oh, I really? Just, I just yelled at her and hung up. Uh. Uh, uh, Drew, what's the difference between me calling somewhere 15 minutes before I need the cab or me calling when I need the cab and waiting for 15 minutes? Of course. The cab shows up at midnight. If I call it a quarter to midnight, it shows up at midnight. Did you just call during the last break? Yes. Oh, my God. I just called during the break and said I needed a cab at midnight. She said it doesn't work that way. You call up when you need the cab, and it takes 15 minutes to get there. I said, but it's a quarter to midnight. No. <laughs> what a delight. I love the way people do business. That's Desert Cab, by the way, if anyone is uh, listening. Desert Cab. Please do not patronize Desert <laughs> Cab in Las Vegas. They got a Desert Queen manning the goddamn phone. All right, Drew, what are we going to do? Let's help uh, some people. All right, good times. Uh, uh, I'll, I'll call back in 20 minutes, and then I'll wait a half hour for the cab to show up. It'll be great. All right, this is uh, Jilly, who's 16. Jilly? Joey. Jelly. Joey. Jelly. She's saying Jelly. 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 O-E-Y. Okay. Okay. You want to spell that again? J-O-E-Y. <laughs> All right. And she's how old? Sixteen. Uh -huh. All right. Right What's on. That? Okay. Um, well, I've had one sexual partner, and he was, like, skinny, skinny, like, kind of on the smaller side, I guess. I mean, his, his body was. He was a small person. Yeah, yes. and he had, like, mm -hmm. a smaller um, unit, yeah, I guess penis. you can yeah. call it. Mm -hmm. um, and I have a boyfriend right now um, who's on the heavier side, and I know we'll probably end up having sex eventually. And I was wondering if bigger guys have bigger um, units or whatever. You mean taller guys <laughs> like or, or fatter guys? Like taller, both. Huskier yeah. guys. He's, like, buff yeah. and, like, kind of heavier, though. Buff and heavier. Okay. No, the answer is no. In fact, heavier guys tend to have smaller dorks. Are you serious? Yeah. That's not well, good. but heavier. I mean, well, the fat fat produces adipose. The adipose rather produces estrogen, and that can affect that. But well, this guy's not fat, is he? Well, he's like buff and fat. If that makes sense, like that's, husky, no, I, I, that's what you call I, I husky. Know. Football player. He's like a lineman or something. Yeah. Well, God, God bless you for uh, dating a big buff guy. <laughs> yeah, big fat buff guy. That's, how much? How much does he weigh? Um, I'm not sure. Probably like around 250, maybe. Oh, yeah. 16. And I'm like really small. Like, well, they, he's 28. <laughs> no, <laughs> he's he's playing uh, arena ball. Uh, no, he's like 18. Uh, good times. All right. Well, look. Like, uh, five five, like 100. Th there really is not a any kind of meaningful relationship between the size of the individual and the size well, of the. Well, it's not like that really even matters. But I was just curious. You were just wondering. I understand. So yeah. we're answering your question. Okay. So, no. No. 
No. The answer is no. No. I mean, Drew, is there a size? Well, what are other things? Your nose? Is your nose? Right. Your, you finger, your fingers get? No. Well, fingers, hands, yeah, maybe. sure. But, I mean, look at all the uh, classic big penis guys. Uh, you know your John Holmeses, <laughs> your John Holmeses, and the, the, the classic realm. <laughs> your, uh, your your Dick Rambones, <laughs> your Long Don Dong Silvers. Who, by guys. the way, it was originally Long Dong Silverman, but he you know to get work he changed it to Silver. Nice. Well, none of these guys was over 160 pounds. Interesting. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. The classic mammoth penises of history were not on big guys. John Holmes, spindly guy. So, Joey, uh, no relationship there to speak Okay, of. well, thank you. All right. Uh, mm -hmm. In the meantime, Adam is going to go on with his uh, discussion of the classics. Uh, yeah. <laughs> You're long. <laughs> Dick Rambone. I love that guy. I right, guess take one more quick call, Drew. Ooh, I have to quick. Let's see. All right. Hold the longest. This is uh, Ben, 16. Ben, real quick. Uh, yeah, um, I'm not circumcised. Yeah. I'd like to be. I'm wondering what the risks are. Not real much in the way of risk. Obviously, it's a little bit of a surgical procedure and infection, and sometimes even bleeding can be an issue. It's pain. That's the main thing that people are uncomfortable for a couple of weeks afterwards. But it's a very simple, very safe procedure. All right. We'll uh, take a little break. We'll be back to uh, wrap up after this. Well, that's the show, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. Drew? Yeah, I noticed you didn't rush out of there tonight because uh, where the hell are you going? You're going to walk down Sahara Avenue? Try to flag no, down a cab? No, you know what? I uh, commandeered uh, a couple of the brothers from the hip-hop station down the hall to give me a ride. I think I'm going to have to buy them a lap dance or something. <laughs> I think I'm getting a ride from them because they said I could roll with them, but right. I'm not sure if, what that means. I, nope. I think that means a ride to uh, Olympic Gardens right. tonight. Sounds so, good. Uh, say, oh, hi to make cool. a, say hi to make for me. Uh, if she's there, Skinny. I certainly will. Trump. Not fat. She's not fat. No, <laughs> She's got big boobs. Uh, she made that abundantly clear. <laughs> All right, we will uh, take ourselves a little uh, extendo 22-hour break, and then uh, the uh, good-looking kids from uh, Blue Crush in tomorrow night. So, until next time, this is Adam Carolla for Dr. Drew saying mahalo. This has been Loveline. The opinions expressed on this show are not necessarily those of the staff, management, sponsors, or this station. The producer for Loveline is Ann Wilkins Engel. Loveline is a presentation of Westwood One Entertainment.